This Week in History with Mike and Will. I'm Mike. I'm Will. As you know, with the show, what happens is Will picks a, a date in history, something that happened on this week, mm-hmm. uh, it's a time in history, and then he explains it to me, and he has one hour to do that. Mm-hmm. Should be fun. Should be. To- <laughs> to- <laughs> to- <laughs> today, uh, we're going to be discussing the first Roman emperor, mm-hmm. which happened in 27 B.C., January 16th, of this week in history. I'm ready. I'm getting better at this intro. You are. Right, you, have one, you have one hour, Will. Ready? Ready. I'll begin. All right. So now we've got the sands counting down. Who is the first Roman emperor? Why is this a big deal? Well, the first Roman emperor was a guy named Augustus. So Augustus. Is technically the day we're talking about is when he was given the name Augustus. Mm. Who was he before that? Before that, his name was Octavian. Oh. And Octavian was a relative of one Julius Caesar. He was actually his technically grand nephew. So Julius Caesar was not the emperor of Rome. No, no, Julius Caesar was not an emperor. So we're going to talk about all of that. All right. When there were emperors, like what what this is all about. But was yeah. there before there was an emperor? Yeah. And I have specific dates written. Oh, down Julius Caesar was an emperor. He was a Caesar, right? So. <laughs> That's actually not what that means. Oh, okay. I thought Caesar was a title. It's a name. He was born by Caesarian section. Oh. C-section, so that was the name he took. That's where the term Caesarian section comes from. It's from him. It came from that him. Mm-hmm. So he took that name? Yes, but he didn't coin the term. I believe it was a twist of how the words work. I, I'd have to look it up exactly why he picked that name. But yeah. That was, I mean, I've heard the term Caesarean section. Yeah. I guess I knew that, that maybe he was yeah. as well. Yeah, he was a C-section. However, <laughs> that he was named that. Yeah. His real name was Gaius Julius Caesar. That's his full name. Gaius Julius Caesar. Gaius Julius. Gaius Julius, yes. Because right. the house is Julius. His first name was Gaius. And then his, like, you picked, a, a like, a chosen name. Yeah. That kind of fit you. He picked. And he picked... Caesar. And yeah. he was the only guy called Caesar at that time. There were other people, I think, in Roman history who might have been, but I'm actually not sure. I'd have to well, go. it would be like the modern day version if someone just said, I'm now going to change my name to C-section. <laughs> that seems odd. Yeah, but my question odd. was, the term Caesarian was before Caesar? I'm going to have to look now. Okay. Now well, i got to look. All right. We'll have to check that one. Let's check because that one. Because that's not the one this is about. That's right. Sorry. This is about his grand-nephew. His grand-nephew Octavian. Octavian. So the founding of Rome is dated at the 21st of April in 753 B.C. That's about 20 years before what we were talking about. Yes. <laughs> or for those actually doing math, uh, it's more like uh, 726 years before that. Oh, I'm sorry. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> You're a little off. What'd you say? I said 750. Oh, 700. I just heard the word seven. I'm not really paying attention. <laughs> I though. can tell. This is going great. <laughs> <laughs> After that strong intro, too. <laughs> so, Rome was founded in, in 753 BC. Yes. Uh, and it was. Uh, you know what? I heard it like a time, like 7 colon 53. 53. <laughs> it was at 753 a.m. BC. Okay. Carry on. Carry on. Drink your coffee. <laughs> You're going to need it. So that was the the when they say that Rome was founded. Yes. It's not completely like verifiable through total Roman thing because they kind of link it to a legend. Sure. Uh, about these two brothers, Romulus yeah. and Remus, were raised by a wolf. wolf. Yep. And then came back and became twin kings and of the country and all this jazz. Okay. So uh, after that, though, during after the founding, there were kings in Rome. It was a kingdom. Like yeah. A, classic kingdom. I mean, it was like a city-state kingdom. It was mostly just Rome itself, and then kind of what you could see around it. It wasn't a very big kingdom. Um, But it started to flourish, and eventually people got sick of the kings. They were tyrants. They were like really bad tyrants. They just like grab women and take them for families and just bed them, and that was... Because you're king? Because you're king, and that's what you think you can do. You can just do whatever you want, and... The people got sick of it, and they're, <laughs> they're like, we're your army, we're your tax base, we're your everything, and we're tired of you. So they kicked the kings out. The last king was, what I love his name, it was uh, the Tarquinian family. Tarquinian? Tarquinian, T-A-R-Q-U-I-N-A-N. Uh, but Tarquinius was the name of several of the kings. There were, I think, 11 of them. Tarquinius? Total. 
Uh, and it was Lucius Tarquinius and his uh, cognomen, cognomen, cognomen was the name that he picked, Superbus. Okay. <laughs> And that is from uh, the uh, Sorcerer's Stone or uh, from the Deathly Hallows? Which yes. one is that? <laughs> you pick. Okay, well, it's for sure Harry Potter. Harry, yeah, yeah, very much. Lucius Tarquinius <laughs> Superbus. Poof. <laughs> uh, but uh, he got kicked out in 509 BC, so for 244 years ish, the Romans were ruled by kings. Okay. And it was. Not a great time for the Roman people. Rome just basically stayed as a smaller town on a hill. After they kicked the kings out. This was how long it was. And okay. then they kicked the kings out. Oh, okay. And the kings, they realized, were part of the reason they weren't getting bigger and stronger. Okay. So did things get better then? After things got a lot better. Oh. Rome became a republic. Oh. And immediately after that, they started to, like, eat up their neighbors, basically. Either through conquest yeah. or marriage or alliance. And then eventually, you know, it goes from... The city of Rome on a hill to the seven hills of Rome. Oh, yeah. They basically just won all the hills. <laughs> and then it branches out beyond that until they control all of Italy. So they had a Senate? They had a Senate. Elected elected or just rich people? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so the way it works is, is this should sound similar. Uh, they had a Senate, mm -hmm. but usually the people who the people who had their, the right to become a senator yeah. had to have a certain amount of property. Mm -hmm. And in order to vote, you had to have a certain amount of property. Mm -hmm. So if you didn't own land, mm -hmm. you couldn't have any say in government. Yeah. Um, then they, they kind of set it up to have like a House of Commons, House of Lords thing, like yeah. how Parliament works, where they had the Senate, and then they had the People's Tribune. They okay. got one. Yeah. <laughs> for all the people. Okay. <laughs> and then eventually the, the now, People's Tribune... Grew beyond uh, sure, yeah, because the people want to say the thing. Yeah. I can see the logic, though, of it. Like, we're going to rule this land. All right, who run, who owns this land? Well, I own this land. Okay, then I should be the one in charge of ruling. Who's that? He just works on it. He doesn't, yeah, he own doesn't it. know what's going on. <laughs> yeah. I, I could see the logic of it. Right. It could also, I could also see it becoming really bad. Yes. <laughs> also, at this time, uh, if you had land, you had to outfit yourself for war. Oh, sure. So, got to protect the land. Got to protect the land. So it wasn't like these guys just sat back in the house like fat cats and waged war, but they sent the poor people to go That to would it. come later. Honestly, a lot of the poor people weren't allowed in the military because they couldn't afford to fight. They couldn't mm. buy equipment, and the Romans were like, yeah, we're not just going to throw people at it. But yes, it would come later where they send the poor After people After they back. improve things. we got to uh, make things better and then send the poor people We figured out the back. system. We send other people to do we the do, work. It makes it a lot. Then yeah. you make more money. Sure. Yeah. Um, outsourcing. Outsource the job. That's right. And that's what made Rome really strong initially, though, is because people had an investment in the growth of the country yeah. and an investment in themselves. So they would spend the money to buy armor. Um, and then that's what kind of created the later ranks of the Romans. So they had, like, the uh, equestrians. That was, like, a, a rank. Oh. Um, or the equites. And those were the people that could afford to buy a horse okay. and ride a horse into battle. So that set up a class of people that are basically the Roman equivalent of the knights. They yeah. had enough land to be a cavalry member. They had armor, sword, sure. spear, shield, and a horse. And surely if you were born into that family, you get horses too. Yeah. Even yeah. if you say, Papa, I do not like horses. Exactly. <laughs> that doesn't matter. Papa, you, I do not know how to ride. You will learn how I to I want ride. to sing. You can sing. But you're also going to run. Oh, Papa. No. Papa, can you hear me? Mm. Nope. Got a helmet on, <laughs> riding on my horse. Mm. Right. So if there are different strata of yes. people. And then there was like the senatorial class. Mm -hmm. And there were these guys are both parts of what was called the patrician class. And then there's the plebeian class, which is poor folk. Yeah. Mostly laborers. They don't, they might own a little bit of land, but like enough to build a small, small house. Yes. <laughs> You can live um, in this corner. You can live in this corner. Most of them lived in what would be considered kind of like a tenement housing situation. Okay. Where it's like lots of buildings piled on top of each other. Oh, and sure. Older stuff. Yeah. Uh, or they'd rent or whatever. Ooh. Um, I'm talking about rent. I wouldn't know when rent started. Oh, probably Rome. <laughs> I feel like the Romans would have been like, well, you can't own the land, but you can live here, but you're going to pay me. I'm going to make privilege. a little note to look up when rent began. When did rent begin? It's a weird concept to me. It is. But I rent. rent. Yeah. But I feel like I shouldn't. It's still a weird concept. It's a weird concept. Yeah. I'm going to pay you what would cost me to own this place. Yeah. 
to just let me crash here and you can kick me out whenever you want. Yeah. Yeah, it's not great. <laughs> but I don't have to mow the lawn and I don't have to shovel snow. Sure. But I feel like, you know, maybe I could just and pay somebody else to do that. And, and you can leave whenever you want. Mm -hmm. That's true. They can kick you out, but you can also leave. You can also leave. Works both ways. It does. Oh, well, unless you have a rental agreement, then you'd be breaking your lease. Moving on. We're moving <laughs> on. And that's what happened in Rome. And that's that happened. That's how this all went down. Hmm. So anyway, um, moving on from there, though, the Republic starts to grow and expand and expand. Um, for the most part, it does very well for itself. The city of Rome, uh, at its height, I think, had a total in-city population of like 300,000 people. Oh. Which is, at the time, that's the biggest city in the world. Sure. By, a, like... A lot. I don't think even in like China, where they had massive populations, they had cities that big. They had comparable cities. That's like three times the size of Green Bay for those watching Green Bay, but that doesn't help anybody. No, and also in a much smaller space. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because Green Bay is oh, spread so three out three times, more. but more. But, yeah. Okay. It's yeah. bigger than Green. Yeah. It's triple the population, but squished inside a wall. All right. So, yeah, the population density is crazy high. But for the most part, these are, like, laborers and workers and people yeah. doing stuff. And you stack them. Um, and you just stack them up. Don't even have to give them a house. Just sit on each sure, other. Sure, yeah. Sit. I said sit. Sit, sit, sit on, each, on other. each other. We'll talk about plumbing later. Later. <laughs> Which was a Roman thing. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not our subject today. Mm -hmm. So we have this, this lovely republic. And it goes on, and it, it has... Some issues, you know, like every republic does, sure. like every country does, any society does, has hiccups. Um, there are some concerns about how it's being run. And eventually this guy, Sola, comes along and he's like, I'm taking control because I don't like this. Who? Who? Sola? Sola. S-U-L-L-A. And he is a rival of a guy named Marius. And Marius, M-A-R-R, -R, or M-A-R-I-U-S. Uh, is famous for reforming the Roman military. Ah. He said, the way we're doing this is complicated and it doesn't work very well. It's kind of like how the Greeks would fight. It's a phalanx where it's just a big pile of guys, spears poking at each other. Yeah. And the way the army originally worked was you had light infantry, then you had medium infantry, and then you had heavy infantry. So light infantry got beat up and they'd try to run away and then run into the medium infantry and medium infantry might let them through. Okay. And then the most skilled fighters were in the back, huh. not doing the majority of the work. And part of it was, if you ran and you weren't supposed to, they'd stab you. Yeah. So Marius thinks this isn't a great idea. He yeah. shifts it uh, to make the Roman legions, okay. which are much more efficient, smaller unit size, but spread out more. You can do a lot more with it. Okay. Um, and during all of this chaos, a family runs afoul of Sulla, and it is the Julii clan. And the heir apparent to this family is Mark, er, Gaius Julius Caesar. Hey, we talked about him just a moment ago. So, this is where we're building up to. So, yeah. Caesar has to kind of go into hiding because yeah. Sulla wants him dead, oh. and he wants the whole family like wiped out. Oh. It's like kind of a genocidal, Ooh. kill the whole family. Sulla. He's, he was a tyrant. Okay. And he almost became king. But then, for some reason, he just gave it up. Huh. He, like, surrendered his power eventually. It was real weird. Like, hmm. he had everything, and then he just went, oh, I'm done. Interesting. I imagine to become king it takes a lot of different things. You have to have the want, you have to have momentum, you have to have the backing of you certain have have people. people. And at some point, I'm thinking, like, the momentum also might be a thing where you're like, you know what? It's not worth it. It's not worth it. <laughs> well, and the other thing, too, is Maybe. I don't Sulla know. saw himself as a true Republican. Okay. Not in the modern American terms of a Republican. Like, actually believed in the founding of this Republic, that it was government by the people, um, and he was simply enforcing their will. Ah, okay. Uh, a contemporary of Sulla's and, like, his top general was Pompey Magnus. Ah, yes. Who was our very first video. Yeah, we just talked video about him. Was about... <laughs> 20 years ago, like the founding of mm -hmm. Rome. Um, so Magnus and Caesar are kind of the same generation coming okay. up, but differently and on different sides. So Caesar eventually survives all of this yep. and starts making a name for himself, becomes a general eventually, a soldier, a senator, a consul, rises up from obscurity of this family that almost dies out to powerhouse. And you mentioned, like, I thought Caesar was a king. Well, Caesar yeah. never became king. 
what was going on in, in Rome was they had the civil war between Pompey yep. and Caesar. Yep. And it was a long, drawn-out affair. It was really bloody, and it was the most violent civil war in Roman history up until that point. Sure. And Caesar comes out on top. And rather than just say, I'm the king, which would have made the senators mad, yeah. um, he kind of just inches his way into it. Like he's, I'm just going to be consul. And then I, I'm going to be dictator for life, which is king and everything except yeah. name. He's just not going to have the crown. Oh, I see. So the people... Oh, is that a thing? Do they get a crown of, uh, of uh, leafies? They had laurels. Yep. Did, I, feel like, I feel like that happened at some point and it angered people. Like, well, it's not really a crown. <laughs> well, originally the laurel maybe was it's just a, movie. a sign. Maybe it's of, a movie I saw. I don't know. The original idea of the laurel was just like a sign of you were a triumphant war leader, oh, okay. and you earned the right to wear it. Okay. So lots of people had the right to wear the laurel crown at like formal events, sure. uh, especially like a dictator. Yeah. And up till then, a dictator terms like of, of what that means is everybody relinquishes all power to one guy. Right. To get stuff done. Yes. And it's usually, well, it's always for, like, the good of the Republic, and it's supposed to only be for six months, tops. Oh. So one of the, the most famous dictators was Cincinnatus. Cincinnatus was a farmer, but a Roman farmer, so that means he owned a huge swath of land and probably had slaves. <laughs> Not, he's just one guy with a, sure. with like a hoe, <laughs> and they just ride up to him like, hey, random farmer. Become the dictator and lead Rome. Yeah. Was he asked to be the dictator? Or you, or do you, uh, they rode out to him and asked him to be the dictator. Okay. And he was like, I don't want that job. And they're like, that's why you are the guy to oh, do I it. Oh, I see. Yeah. The people who should have power are the people who want it the least. Yeah. That kind of a thing. So they give him the thing. He rides out, crushes an army in six days, and then hands back control without question. Good job, Cincinnati. That's and then he how did it again run. later. They did this same guy. They were like, can you do this again? He's like, sure. Right. Puts the country back together, hands over the reins of power. And Whew. he's what kind a of renowned for this. Yeah. Uh, which is why like, we have the city of Cincinnati in this country. We had the, um, I think it's the Brotherhood of Cincinnati, mm -hmm. which was in honor of George Washington and was created by Baron von Steuben, who we also talked about. Um, so it was this respect for being given the power and then meh. Give it away. Give it away. And someday we'll probably go into detail about Cincinnati. Sure. That's the name, dude. That sounds great. Um, but not today. We're no. building up to who this Octavian guy is. Yes. So Caesar, unlike Cincinnati and all these other guys in this, you know, like almost 500 years of Republican Rome, he's like, yeah, I don't think I'm going to give it up. You guys are all dumb. Like, there was a civil war. You guys are corrupt. You guys are bad. The people worship Caesar at this point. Sure. Like, he's like, if you had like a popularity contest or like a poll to see how well he was doing, it was like 80% of the people were like rabid fans of mm. Julius Caesar. The way you were just saying that you guys are all dumb and I should be running these things, I uh, heard in a different person's voice and it disturbed me. <laughs> that is disturbing. <laughs> As we're leading up to a guy who's not willing to give up power. <laughs> just say. Just say. <laughs> Just say. Who would you be referring to? I don't know. To? Uh -huh. No one in particular. You're, you're gesturing a lot with your hands. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's Carry fine. it on. <laughs> but yeah, so anytime somebody goes, you guys are all stupid and only I know what's going on. Yeah. Now here's the thing though. Caesar's got a proven track record of <laughs> knowing what's sure. going on and, okay. to coin the phrase, getting stuff done. There like, we go. Just slightly twisted. He's, he gets stuff done. Yeah. Caesar's the guy who went like, oh. Gaul? That's a problem? I'm going to conquer it. There you go. And then he did. Oh, the Germans are causing a problem? I'm going to beat them up. You know what? We've never been to Britain. I'm going to go there. Not worth conquering. Totally was worth conquering. He just couldn't get the job done. Yeah, so it's across an island. It's yep. <laughs> He's just like, um, I did all this stuff. And he brought back fantastic amounts of wealth. Um, and, you know, for the Romans, that's, they're like, if you're out there fighting for Rome. Yeah, all right. Get your stuff that's done. good stuff. That's good stuff. We don't yeah. care who you're fighting as long as it's not other Romans. Oh, wait, unless it's Pompey, because we don't really like that guy. Yeah, He's kind yeah. of like the the last vestige of Sulla to that. Okay. Like Pompey is like a carryover from that dark time that they didn't really like. Yeah. So a lot of Romans are happy to see him go, too. 
and they don't really like a lot of his policies. They think he's too chummy with some of the rich folk, and some of the rich folk don't like him because he's of a lower class than they are. Oh. Um, I think he was from the equestrian class. Pompey we're talking about? Pompey. Okay. So there was all these rivalries with him. So when Caesar comes in, he's extremely popular. Even in the Senate, he's got like a majority of the senators love him. Yeah. Of course, a lot of it is because he's willing to pay a ton of money to buy that loyalty. Like an absurd amount of money. He's the richest man in Rome. Make a note here. Money seems money. to buy money friends. Money seems to buy friends. <laughs> this is the flaw with money. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> with any, it's always funny when people are like, oh, well, the government is corrupt and stuff. It's like, no, people are corrupt. And when you have people in the government and other people are allowed to give them money, that's a problem. People are corrupt. Government just puts it down in writing. Yeah, at least they're honest <laughs> about it. <laughs> Sometimes paperwork. Paperwork. All right. So Caesar is. Poised to take control, and a few of those senators, about 50 of them, say, no. And they murder him. Yeah. And it's... A allegedly. Pretty, allegedly. <laughs> it's just that every single guy who held the knife and stabbed him, like 50 some odd people stabbing him, he was covered in dozens of wounds. I'm Crazy waiting. enough, only like three of them were fatal. I'm waiting for the reports. I'm, I'm waiting for the Marcus yep. Anthony report. Yeah, we got to get the Mark Anthony on. report. It's like, if this didn't happen, <laughs> I want a committee and a subcommittee. That's right. Fake news, right? <laughs> Caesar <laughs> wasn't assassinated. <laughs> he tripped. Just he tripped and fell. In a terrible kitchen accident. In a dagger factory. <laughs> <laughs> and then staggered all the way to the Senate saying, we need better safety controls. At the dagger factory. True victim. You know, ah. like, once you fall down on one dagger, it's hard to not fall down on a second one. Yeah. <laughs> Especially, you know, on your back. Mm -hmm. And then roll over onto it on your front. That's so, yeah. Daggers are dangerous. Obviously, that's what happened. Daggers. Sure. Yeah, nice. nice Can you point. imagine being in the Senate the day before, or the day that happens, and like right before it happens, and just be there waiting? Like, who's on board? You guys are <laughs> on board? Okay. Hope. Everybody's actually going to do We're doing this, this, right? right? It's like, like, it's I'm like not going to be the only jerk who sticks him, right? It's like a, a surprise party, but like elevated. A little up. bit, yeah, because yeah, it's like if you mess up. And do other people know? Die. Like if you're not, one of the staffers like, what's going on here? It feels tense in this room. Yeah. Like, why Why are those guys all standing there and they all have one hand behind yeah. their back? No. I just imagine that, that, that 20 minutes before it happened had to be yep. really awkward for you. Real awkward. Just, <laughs> well, and like. These guys had to meet in secret. Yeah. And Caesar's the most powerful man in Rome, so it's not like he doesn't have spies and people sure. giving him information. So they're trying to plan this all out. And what's crazy, too, is one of the leaders of it, Brutus, mm -hmm. was like his adopted son. Oh, yeah. Caesar, like, loved this guy. Yeah. He's, he was very close to him. So they murder him. End of the dictator, oh, right? Wait, I need to back up on the murderer thing as well. Uh, uh, so is the uh, so the Shakespeare, the Shakespeare fellow wrote a play about it. Yep. You might have heard of him. Look him up. He's Bill a, Shakespeare. He's written some good stuff. Uh, Allegedly. Uh, and there's a, the part where there's a guy warns him, beware the Ides of March. The, yep. As you say. Is there any, uh, let's see now, when you said he had spies and people around, is there any, like, is that based on a factual person? Like someone warned him, like one of his. He like, probably like, had been warned. Had been but warned. Like most of the time, he was on. like, "Well, he, when you are have done nothing but win." I guess have not been assassinated so the, far. And gone through all these things, and you've been told you're going to get like every time you went to the Senate, he could have been assassinated. Sure. I just uh, that's a good conversation. But yeah, sir, we think you might be assassinated. Listen, I haven't been assassinated yet, <laughs> so it I have hasn't pretty happened good, yet. I pretty think, good I, track I, think I know what's up. I, I, one thing I did like was uh, the, the TV show Rome, I think, does a great job of yeah. you know, portraying these events because they make Caesar kind of more like a set piece rather than like a character. He's almost sure, like sure. larger than life. But what they they were like, all these things go wrong leading up to his assassination. Like he doesn't have his, his guard dog guy. With oh, him. He doesn't yeah. have this brutal warrior that always follows him around that they think is only in the Senate to protect Caesar yeah. and be his, like, the guy who beats up people for him. And, the you know, did Caesar actually have a guy like that? Did he actually have this, yeah, yeah. you know, Centurion following him around that would have protected him? Because Antony wasn't there, but if he had been, things would have been a lot different. Because yeah. that guy was one of the most dangerous men in Rome. Hmm. Even unarmed, he would have found something. <laughs> Just beat one of the old men with another old man. Oh. That's, that's how he... He didn't care. 
So if you haven't seen it, the, the, the Rome, Rome HBO. from um, HBO. Amazing stuff. Season one, very good. I have not watched season two yet. Season two's all right. It's okay. not quite as good. I think I watched Caesar's the first. Not, Caesar's not in it. Yeah. <laughs> That's, I remember season. watching the first season and loving Caesar. He's yeah. really good. The actor. I've seen uh, him in other things. I forget his name now. Sierra and Hines. Yeah. Uh, he's really, amazing. Really good. And then the second season, like, hey, he's not in it. He's not in it. Not quite as exciting. The main guys are great. It's Ray Stevenson as sure. Titus Polo and... Uh, uh, Oh yeah, Kevin the, McKidd. Yeah, the two guys. Those those guys. Yeah. They're great. Yeah. Uh, the the century who are actually real people. The the oh. Lucius Verinas and Titus Pulla are mentioned by Caesar by oh. name oh, okay. as being heroic warriors at the siege of Elysia, which yeah. is this massive battle. Sure. And C- Caesar makes a note of talking about them. There so must these be guys some are heroes. Creative license though given to those characters because they, they oh, do follow because then they just make anytime something happens it's, they're involved. Yeah. Yep. And it's a great use of that. It's sure. a great way to do that. So anyway. Yeah, side note, watch that show. What's <laughs> going on with the Caesar and why we're mentioning all this is because during all of this time, uh, Caesar has a a niece, Atia, who's another character in Rome. Okay. And she's not like a, a big mover and shaker, but she's he see, he looks on her like kind of like his daughter. Okay. He doesn't have like kids. He doesn't have like adult male children, um, and he just he's a big family guy because his family got murdered. <laughs> so he's big on the survivors, right? <laughs> um, so Addy and he are close, and he really dotes on her son Octavian. He uh-huh. thinks Octavian's a pretty all right kid, mm-hmm. um, and Octavian worships Caesar. He just mm-hmm. thinks, I mean, he's, he's like that is my. He's basically his grandfather. Yeah. Um, and Octavian doesn't have a dad. His dad died. Uh, he's had a stepfather, but his stepfather's kind of an absentee figure in his life. And, but he's like, my grandfather, my, my grand uncle, right. is like the most famous guy in Rome. And he's a powerhouse kind of character. He's yeah. mega charismatic. I want to be like him. Just like him. So, like when Caesar's on campaign, Octavian keeps like, I want to go. But he's like six. <laughs> His mom's like, no, you can't go. You can't lift a sword. You can't go. He's like, I got a sword, though. He's like, that's a knife. It's not even a real knife. It's like a butter knife. What are you doing? I can Dang. kill somebody. Dang, you're just going to be dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> Spoilers. Your granduncle will tell you daggers aren't that dangerous. <laughs> it's only dangerous if you have a sword. Sure. Famous last words. <laughs> Knives don't kill people. <laughs> I was wrong. I was so wrong. <laughs> So Octavian, though, eventually gets his way and he gets to go on campaign. All right. Uh, and it's during the civil war with Pompey. He gets on a ship. Yeah. He... And like first he's like gonna go, then he gets violently ill. Oh. He recovers. The yeah. war is still going on. He's like, all right, this time I'm actually going. I have to go to a different place because you guys aren't fighting there anymore. You're fighting here. Good thing so, the war's still going good on. Good thing it's still Yay. happening. I get to go watch people <laughs> be murdered. Mm. So he jumps on a, a ship then. And then it shipwrecks Oops. in enemy territory. And he's got like five guys with him left. Oh, no. So he has to make his way overland through enemy territory to find his uncle. And he finally finds Caesar. And he's like, how are you? How are you alive? That was awesome. And he is so impressed that once the war is done and they get back to Rome, he changes his will completely oh. and makes Octavian his heir. Wow. All you have to do is survive a shipwreck. All you have to survive, all, survive a shipwreck and walk through like you know fifty miles of enemy territory. Where if yeah. they find you, they'll probably crucify you. Thanks. Good job, Octavian. Good job, Octavian. Just the kid's got pluck. He's got pluck, and yeah, he does. And, and Caesar's super busy. All mm-hmm. right, kiddo. Yeah. Uh, and that's in that's forty six B C. Forty six B C. We're getting close. BC. Well, unfortunately, not long after that. 44 BC, Oops. Caesar gets murdered. Oh, so Octavian's like, Grandpa, Papa, <laughs> Papa. That's his. And then, like, since he's his adopt, he's his heir. Yeah. He refers to him from then on as father. Yeah. So when Caesar dies, there's this vacuum, because the Senate thinks we're gonna go back to business as usual. Yep. Oh, we finish that up. Unfortunately, you guys want to wash up and then uh, get the mop out. Unfortunately, there. Are Different mindsets within sure. the Senate. Sure. Because well, we check with everyone. How many people were in the Senate? You said about fifty people were in on the. Oh, I want to say something like three hundred. Okay. It's a big group of people. 
So it's not like our Senate. It's like if you mixed our Senate and our House of Representatives together. Okay. It's big. But a minority, though, was a part. Was a group that that did the murder. Yeah. Yep. That's got But be. bear in mind, a bunch of them just watched it happen. Sure. Too. Right. Right. <laughs> so every single one of them is like, "Well, what's done is done, and this this yep. happened." And then they have to pay attention to Mark Antony, um, who they think is going to go into a, just a blind rage and murder everybody, no. but he doesn't. He's a talker. He shows up and he is calm and collected, Ooh, that's which is scarier. a little scarier. Yeah, scarier. And then they have Caesar's funeral. Now, because he's a former consul, despite the fact that they uh, allegedly murdered him to put down the tyrant and save Rome, yeah. and for a time, they're like seen as heroes because of the propaganda. Mark Antony flips it on its head. Oops. At Caesar's funeral, he gives a eulogy yeah. and talks about this ultimate betrayal of Caesar, he holds up the bloodied robe that he was assassinated <laughs> in, and the crowd goes Props. just crazy. And understandably, because sure. they're like, that guy was a hero of Rome! <laughs> There's talk about wanting to deify Caesar and yeah. officially make him a god. And Antony's like, okay, that's going a little too far. And that creates a riff immediately with him and Octavian. Because oh. Octavian now is coming into power, and Antony doesn't like Octavian. Antony was Caesar's right-hand man. Okay. He's probably miffed he was not in the will. Yeah. Because when they read out the will, Octavian got all the stuff. Oh, no. And Antony might have been... Listening and crying? The heir apparent kind of a... Oh, like sure. He, he was at every battle. Yeah. He was there nonstop. And then... Always get in the will, people. Suddenly, Always get in the will. Suddenly the Make kid Make sure shows you're in up. that will. And this kid who's not a soldier, yeah. who's not practiced <coughs> in the ways of, of politics yet, he's just some kid. He's a stripling. He has no point. He's, he, he's furious, right? Yeah. A stripling? Stripling? I think I always pronounce it stripling. It might be stripling. I don't know. I've not heard the word. It's spelled stripling, but I always said stripling. Okay. I think it's like a small tree. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, stripling, stripling. I don't know how it's pronounced. That's what? one of those I learned it by reading it sure, sure. and not hearing it. What does it mean? Uh, it's like a little wispy thing, like okay. a youth. Nice. Right. That's why small tree. Like a sapling? Like a sapling, but different. Right. I, I learned a new word today. If nothing else, I learned a new word. I think that's a, a stripling yeah. is a tree. I'll give it a try. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Answer in the comments if you know this. Sure, sure. Thank you. <laughs> to our one... Or two viewers, <laughs> or down the line when we have sixteen thousand. Sure, them, this is all the, of you guys can comment. This, this is you might be we might be talking ten years into the future. Someone right. watching this, somebody watching this, how we'll you, read the comments. How you doing? Hope obsessively. You're, hope you're still doing okay. Hope in the, 10 years the, in the future. countries of the world are still intact. Gravity hasn't failed, and we still have an ozone. Oh no! <laughs> all right, it's already failing. <laughs> Stripling two. Stripling, Octavian. Octavian. So there Mark Antony doesn't really like him. Now, Octavian is ambitious. Ooh, how old is Octavian or in this time? So Octavian now? was born in 63 BC. So around now, he's only he's like 20. 20. Okay. He's, he's, he's a stripling. 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 He's a kid. Kid, but still old enough now, though, to be in Mark an And Mark Antony is an experienced, he's a legatus, he's a general, he's yeah. a warrior, he's a hero, He's and he's lived a life of violence. Like, that's his everything. That's all he has ever done is kill people. Yeah. And he's really, 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 really good at it. So he thinks he's supposed to take sure. over, right? Yeah. Well, the Senate gets nervous immediately because Antony still has his legions. Yeah. <laughs> and they're not happy that Caesar's been murdered because it's the same army of veteran killers who yeah. have been killing with Caesar for decades, some of these guys. have. I mean, the Roman legionaries, you join when you were like 14, and you just fought. Uh, for like at least 20 years, usually, was his wow. service. So a lot of these guys, that's all they've known. Caesar's like their father. And he loved his soldiers, and he was super inspirational. So now their guy died. Oh, boy. And he was murdered. He didn't just die. He was killed. Yeah. So Antony causes this uproar. Octavian is furious that his uncle was killed. His dad. Yeah. Uncle dad. Yeah. Dad uncle. Dunkle. Uh, father figure, anyway. Father figure. Somebody from Alabama explained... If Father it's Uncle? Dunkle or Dunkle, yeah, Funkle. Dunkle. I'm sure it's Dunkle. Dunkle. Yeah, that's probably. I feel Dunkle. like in Alabama they know you can be <laughs> sure, your sure. father and your uncle at the same time. Dunkle, <laughs> take that, Alabama. Not all nice up here. Anyway, <laughs> so he 
Are you writing that down? They're, they're like, can you go. Like that? Okay. Um, so Octavian starts running around gathering support. And he's like, this is nonsense. Yep. These guys murdered my uncle. Yeah. Like, and he takes on the name of Caesar. Okay. Octavian starts calling himself Julius Caesar. Oh, the full name. Yep. He, and normally that's not what you did. You didn't yeah. usually inherit that. He takes on Caesar's name and title, which also makes Antony angry. Sure. He starts making fun of the fact that he took his name. Oh. He starts openly, publicly, ribbing him. It's like you're an idiot. <laughs> Surely there must have been also some some poor uh, peasant somewhere in Rome who didn't who wasn't even aware that it happened. Yep, Julius like, Caesar, you mean the guy in charge? Yeah. yeah, he got killed a couple years ago. What are you talking about? He's right he's there. Julius Caesar, that guy, same yeah. guy. He looks younger than I thought he'd be. <laughs> Whatever. Should he have, be like sixty? We don't have cameras. I've yeah. only seen a wax etching of him. People before. have been talking about him for years. It feels like he looks real good. He looks the same as the guy in the coin. <laughs> Last yeah. time I saw him once. Oh yeah, where the forum? <laughs> How far back were you? All the way. <laughs> I mean, all the way back. This is about four hundred feet away yeah. with. Thousands of people between me and him. And there's a hand in my face, and I'm shorter than most people. Yeah. So. But I mean, either way, he's alive, though, right? Oh, right. Same killed. guy. No, not the same guy. So Octavian has taken on the name of Julius Caesar. Good job, Octavian. And he is the heir to all of Caesar's fortunes, which are considerable. Sure. Um, and also sees himself as the heir to the armies, mm-hmm. which Antony disagrees with. Well, we have a disagreement. We have some disagreements. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, Brutus and the other conspirators are like, uh, are we cool? We should have probably checked in more often. Can we? Can we not? Are you going to murder us too? Uh, yeah. But Antony and Octavian are so at odds that they don't go right after the senators and murder oh. them. Could, they start to they... kind of build up their forces. The senators also go and build up their forces. Sure. And then the Senate as a whole pardons everybody. Yep, good, so you can't, good move. You can't go on a murder rampage, yeah. Antony. And Antony disagrees. So he takes a legion of soldiers, and it's one of Caesar's most elite groups. These guys have been with them, most of them, more than a decade, just fighting and killing. Yep. And at that day and age, it's like, if you've been fighting for ten years, that just means you're exceptionally good at it. You're not like, oh, he's older now. It's, oh, God, no, he's oh, yeah. he's lived ten years in... Melee combat, nonstop stabbing. This guy's good at what he does. Yeah. So Antony goes to one of the senator's villas up in the mountains and besieges it. Oh. And Octavia's like, you're breaking the law. You can't do that. He said no. But the Senate can't really get anybody together. So Octavian gets his own little army together and goes and fights Antony and wins the oh. fight. Um it's not like a slaughter, but Antony is kind of hit by two sides. The guys he's besieging, attacking him, and then he gets attacked in the rear by Octavian's army, and they all have to scatter. Okay. Antony Ant- Ant- himself, I assume, is a fine. He's fine. Sure. He's fine. Like, well, he probably just rides his way through the battle lines and gets out of it. Yeah. Well, then Octavian's like, well, I better follow him. And Cicero, the legendary speaker, yeah. says, don't kill each other. <laughs> Everybody calm down. And he gets them to kind of meet and talk peace. Okay. And eventually, despite all of their fighting, uh, Octavian and Antony team up with a guy named Lepidus, who is a huge supporter of Caesar's. He was one of his, his legates, another general of his. And they create the second triumvirate. So the first triumvirate was Julius Caesar, uh, Pompey, and Crassus. Yeah. Now we've got Octavian, Antony, and Lepidus. Lepidus. And Lepidus is kind of the odd man out. Sure. He gets kind of forgotten a lot by history because he's, he wasn't, it seems like he was kind of put there as like, kind of a, almost a puppet. Yeah. But as an agreeable thing. Yeah. And also as like the balance. Yeah. We're balanced. We've got this they guy. have to publicly have, have him balanced out. And yeah. so if Mark Antony wants to do something, or Octavian wants to do something, they have to get Lepidus on board. Yeah. So it works. It actually really, makes it's a, a good really, sense. It's a really good idea. <laughs> yeah. And they, they keep them ba- balance. Unfortunately, <laughs> this thing does not last forever. So while they have created this power group, right, and they're running Rome basically, the senators that killed Caesar see the writing on the wall. Yeah. And they leave. Mm. All of them. 
it's largely led by Brutus and uh, uh, what was it, Cassius? Yep, Cassius. Yeah. Not to be confused with Crassus. Right. It's very close. Brutus and Cassius take their forces and flee, and it's they get they just start going through all of the Roman provinces, saying, "You must defend Rome, us, and give us soldiers or money, preferably both." <laughs> Please. Please. Because otherwise, Rome will fall and it'll be all your fault. (laughs) So, this goes fairly well. They gather several legions worth of troops. But none of them are Octavian or Mark Antony. Oh. So those two and Lepidus go, yeah, this needs to go away. And they build up a massive army of 26 legions, which if a legion is full-sized, is 4,500 troops. So I'll multiply, that's supposed to be more than 100,000 men. 4,500, 26. Okay, this will take a little bit. This will take a little bit. No, you keep talking. Okay, so they get 26 legions of soldiers, and again, not totally sure that they were max strength. Sail to Greece, where the... Uh, Crassus and where Brutus have their armies, which is pretty sizable as well. And they have two battles at uh, Philippi or Philippi. Philippi. Philippi? It's Philippi. Philippi. Philippi, I think. Philippi. 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 I don't speak Greek well enough to know this. (laughs) Philippi? It's Philippi or Philippi or Philippi. Philippi is how I do it. Philippi. It's about 120,000 troops. So about 120,000 soldiers. (laughs) have this massive battle, on, that's just one side, Yeah. against the senators that are in hiding. Yes. And it's like a slaughter, yeah. eventually. Like well, there were they, 50 senators or so. Yes. And so, before the battle is done and the dust settles, Cassius and Brutus commit suicide. Ooh. Nobody know the bodies are not recovered, Ooh. and it, you know, bad day for them. Sure. But rather than be caught and brought back to Rome in a part of a triumph and, yeah. like, be put in front of the citizenry yeah, and ripped yeah, yeah. apart by the mob. It's considered honorable for somebody of that class of people to commit suicide yeah, okay. by a sword. So they kill themselves. Whew. So Mark Antony and... That plan did not Oct- work yeah. out as they wanted. <laughs> no. So Antony and Octavian go back and they're like, oh, that didn't, uh, uh, it didn't work out for anybody. Yeah. No one had any fun. I mean, they died, so mm. yay! And now they don't have anybody to fight. And then Lepidus dies. Oh, Is the indecency to just die. Oh no! Oh no! He's the so one guy keeping. He's the one guy keeping them together. So division ensues, and Mark Antony immediately is like, you know, I still don't like that you're calling yourself Julius Caesar because you're not Julius Caesar. Because I knew the guy. You're just some little twerp. I've worked with you. You yeah, are I, no Julius Caesar. You, I have known Caesar. You, <laughs> sir, are no Caesar. Cicero stands up for Octavia, which is Cicero hates Antony. Sure. He has publicly stood up and insulted the man multiple times. They hate each other. Yeah. Um, Antony is not nearly the speaker. He's still a good speaker. You had to be a good speaker. He had that one good speech. Yep. For sure. Yes. But But Cicero Cicero is is a legendary orator. He's got books of his work still that are just. That's his job, though. That's his job. Yeah, okay. That's his thing. He's a senator. He writes laws. He was a lawyer. He's this brilliant orator. He's a speaker. And he kind of is, he sees Octavian as like a better Caesar. Oh, okay. He sees him as, this guy could, he has all the traits that Caesar has with the ambition and the intelligence, but maybe not the avarice and the warmonger. Okay. Maybe. Plus, if he's young enough and his Cicero feels he has any sort of influence on him, then yeah. he'll be like, he can, can, he can guide he can him the right way. to be a good uh, leader. Yeah. Yeah. He won't break the Republic. He could lead it, though. Yeah. He could be... And so he puts him up for Senate, like, in, like really early on. Like I think it's like 43 B.C. Okay. Um, so right before this triumvirate forms, he makes him a senator. Okay. And that he's like, this guy. This guy right here. Boom. And he like pushes for him to have like consular authority and all these powers and everything. And people are like, "Oh, well, Cicero says it. Mm-hmm. Good enough for Cicero. If he's good enough for Cicero, then that's great for us." Yeah. And Cicero speaks with a great amount of authority. Well, unfortunately, though, Antony and Octavian really start butting heads, and it gets to the point where it boils over, and they start building up armies against each other. Uh. They don't have the third guy in the middle to slow them down. Yep. They don't have the Senate to distract them. They don't have the traitors that they want to hunt down and kill anymore. Now it's a, one of us is going to be in charge. Top oh man in Rome. Boy. 
So not let's find a third guy again. Nope. 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 Yeah. Octavian has reached his maturity now. He's pursuing his career, and he's not going to be second fiddle to Mark Antony. And right. Mark Antony still sees him as this upstart boy sure. who has no business taking what he's earned. Right. Yeah. So it builds and builds and builds, and eventually Antony realizes he can't stay in Rome because he doesn't have like the Senate support. Okay, there's too much tension here. There's too much tension, and Octavian has Caesar's wealth, and he has most of Caesar's loyalists. And Caesar's, he's in Caesar's name, too, and right? And he's got Caesar's he's name. Going. So, and he's he's a senator now, he's on the rise. Antony can't really act against him. So Antony tries to do the thing of, I'm going to retire to this province. Okay, bye. So, but he kind of strong arms him. He's like, you will give me that province that oh. I want to rule, Okay. Or I'm going to stay here. Oh. So it's kind of a peace treaty, but... Uh... And that was a really common thing that they right. did in Rome, where if, if there was a troublesome guy in power, um, like consuls got to take provinces when they were coming out of power a lot of the time. Okay. You go and run the province, you're the governor. You get a huge amount of wealth, but you're out of the city, so you don't have as direct control over things. Sure. It's like retirement yeah. for a lot of these guys. It's kind of like sending some off to be an ambassador of some country. Right. But you get the revenue of that yeah. country like, in your pocket. Sure, so sure. he picks a very wealthy province, and they're like, yeah, it's fine, get him out of here. And Octavian doesn't like this, and eventually, like, pursues him. Oh. Like, this has got to go. Got to go away. Oh, so we're finishing. Antony ends up in Egypt, okay. where he meets Cleopatra. Oh. They fall in love, okay. and they have kids together. The problem being, Antony's married. Oh, that... But that's not going to play well. That does not back play at, well. Back at home. So Octavian's throwing shade at this whole relationship. Yeah. This is not acceptable. He is a betrayer and all this. And then Antony sp- strikes back saying, well, you're only in power because Caesar had sex with you oh, when what? you were a kid. That's what he tries to use as, a, as a, an excuse. He's like, yeah. well, that's the only reason you got added to the will because you seduced your great uncle. Yowza. And Cicero... F- like flips out about this. He's like, there is no, more, and he he's quoted as saying something along the lines of, "There's no more upstanding and fine representation of Roman youth than Octavian." What are you talking about? And that was a really common thing back then. Was and we do it nowadays too, where it's, you start to throw like, you question like people's sexuality, yeah. or especially like if they there was some impropriety, because it was one thing like if you had like a male lover, that wasn't a huge problem, but if it was your nephew, sure, <laughs> gross, and if they were a child, really gross, yeah, like that wasn't considered okay, yeah, but but throwing accusations is free and easy but, to do, and exactly, you can just say you it. nothing, and you can even follow up with, I'm just saying, I'm, I'm just, just asking questions, just asking questions, <laughs> well, that's the problem, is he doesn't ask questions, oh. he straight up says, well, you're only in power because you had sex with your uncle. No proof, no justification, and it kind of comes out of nowhere. And it backfires, because Cicero's like, that's a load of crap. Uh Uh-oh. And again, when Cicero shouts at you, that's a problem. Yeah, you got to word your accusations more subtly. Well, Mark Antony being the mighty man that he is, eventually winds up back in Rome in power, and Octavian finds himself having to leave. Oh. Because he doesn't have the army right there. Uh Uh-oh. While, I, while Mark Antony is there, he gets a message from Cicero that is read in front of the Senate that basically says Mark Antony is a vile, pathetic worm of a man. Who's reading this? Some, some, poor, some, some, poor, guy is some poor guy in the Senate has to, is reading it. <clears throat> he's like, uh, so Cicero left this and he wanted me to read it publicly. So. And it's... They, again, this is in Rome. They do a great job of showing this where this poor guy's reading it and he realizes what he's reading oh, as no. he says it. And Antony's just sitting there and like his eyes starts to twitch. But can you imagine this is one of the most violent men in Roman history is yeah. sitting in front of you, even though you're in the Senate hall. Like you think, fine. And you're like, oh. Yeah. And it's like a page of, you suck, sir. <laughs> This is not worth my internship. (laughs) Antony has Cicero murdered, has his hands chopped off, and nailed to the Senate door. This doesn't sit well with Octavian because he's super close with Cicero. Most of the Senate is freaked out by this because he, Antony is, they know he did it. It was, he may as well have just gone to him, chopped his hands off, and done it himself. Um, So Octavian gets together with his 
kind of boyhood friend who's much more soldierly, and his name's Agrippa. Agrippa. They link up, and they come back, and they fight Antony, and they drive him out of Rome, and he flees back to Egypt to be with his girlfriend. Because his wife is now dead. Oh, who's? And his girlfriend is Cleopatra. Oh. So he goes yeah. back there, and he's like, okay, so... I know this is like the super Roman thing to do, but I need an army, and I'm going to the provinces, and I'm getting an army, and I'm getting this one. And he kind of sets himself up as king, and she sets it, and she's the queen. Okay. So he's like the king consort type guy. Yeah. She's still very much the boss. Okay. Because Cleopatra has shown she is a very capable, very skilled leader. Yeah. Another person we need to talk a lot about, because she's very maligned as being like this poor type character. Like, that's a term that people use a lot about her, and she's not. Oh, okay. She was... Like badly treated and rose to power because she had to, because otherwise she would have died. Um, she slept with some powerful men, but she did what she had to do. She's to a woman save in a man's herself. world, as it was. And she, w but she was brilliant and very savvy. Right. So she teams up with Antony because she figures best fighter in the empire. Well, it's not the empire; it's the republic. Yep. And we're gonna do this. Sure. They do not do this. <laughs> Octavians picked Agrippa, and Agrippa is like. He's kind of a savant with tactical maneuvering and strategic planning. He's really good at it. And Antony just doesn't have the resources he used to. And they have several massive battles. And eventually, Antony invests it all in a big naval attack. All right. Antony's on one of the ships. The ship sinks. He jumps off, swims to shore, watches the rest of his fleet burn uh -oh. and sink. Goes to Cleopatra, and he's like, well, we lost. Honey, I've got bad news. And then they both commit suicide. Oh. Rather than be caught. Oh. He stabs himself, and she, according to the stories... Stabs herself with a snake. Stabs herself with a snake. Exactly. At least once. But it has two teeth, so it's got to be really hard to stab yourself with a snake. I would have gone with the knife approach. I guess. I, I feel like getting bit by a snake is way worse. Yeah. I have not heard of any snake venom that didn't just suck. If you do it right with like a sword, it's real quick, and you're dead. Hmm. But, but this is allegedly anyway, right? This is allegedly. No, no, but no. either way, they both end up dead. And Octavian has paved the way for himself to step forward. But by also by technically not killing anyone though himself. He doesn't. I mean, except in wars. He did. He just killed. He has not had to assassinate anybody. Yeah, they He's, killed themselves. It's amazing <laughs> that of all of these backstabbings and murders yeah. and everything else, he's largely just reacting. He's yeah. reacting extremely well and very carefully, but he's largely just reacting. Mm -hmm. So it sets this stage, though, now where he's the most powerful man in Rome. But all these movers and shakers who were able to either keep Caesar in check or who fought against Caesar or who were part of his murder, or even like the guys like Cicero who could talk him down yeah. or maybe guide Octavian, none of them are around anymore. Uh, it's just a kid with all the toys. And he basically has a sit down at the Senate and he says, we're going to make my father, Julius Caesar, a god. Huh. And they say, okay, that's a great idea. And he Sounds says, good. <laughs> Chief. By extension, that means I'm the son of a god. Oh, nice. And that makes me pretty damn special. So I want a different title. Oh. And they present to him the title of Augustus, which means the exalted one. Oh, okay. And that's where, like, the month of August comes from. Yeah. This is a very august occasion. It's not just, a, like, a t it, he takes that as, like, how Caesar took Caesar as his name. Yeah, okay. Octavian now takes Augustus, Augustus. Yeah. and he keeps the Caesar part as well. So he becomes Caesar Augustus. Nice. By taking this title, he's not just taking, like, oh, he's got a name. He's exalted. He's like a living god by that definition, by yeah. that name. That means he can't be a consul. That means he can't be a senator. That means he can't be anything. He more has to be that. more than yeah. that. And he becomes the imperator of Rome, the, 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 the emperor, the boss of all Rome. Like he becomes a king. He fulfills all these, every fear that the Senate had about Caesar, Boink. they make happen yeah. directly because... They stop Caesar and inspire his much cannier nephew. Yeah. Because as great as Caesar was, he doesn't have this, like, Octavian sees things that do everybody else doesn't seem to see. And he's an opportunist of, like, epic proportions, where he's just like, hmm, well, he went there, and that left that door open. 
I'm just gonna walk right in. And <laughs> not, I don't know how. There you go. Yeah. Huh. Good job, Octavian. And he just kind of slips into the role, and he does it in such a way that everybody's fine with it. I guess after most of the people who be not fine with it are dead. <laughs> exactly. And again, he didn't assassinate all these people. It's and not his amazing. fault. He's just defending his right. And it all starts with like, I'm just in defending my uncle's, uh, my father's yeah. honor. And now I'm just defending my inheritance. Which really also the also bolsters the argument that his uh, father was a god. It's like, this all just kind of fell together. It seems to really fall together real good. Like it was a plan. Like it was divine. Divinely, Like yeah. I was guided by the gods. And... Of course, one of the gods is my dad. I mean, that all seems to work out real well. So I'd say I'm sitting pretty on all yeah. this. And what this means for the future of Rome, then, is that is the death of the Republic. The Republic oh. never comes back after this. Huh. Immediately after this, for the next almost 500 years, almost to the day, it's an empire. empire. So Rome turns dun, from being dun, 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 and it, it's kind of like that there's that bit in Star Wars where they said this is how democracy <laughs> dies yeah. applause yeah that happens Octavian is applauded he is seen as this triumphant like godlike figure there are statues built of him overnight that he doesn't even have to commission although he definitely does sure, sure. push the narrative Wait, does that mean that Cicero was Jar Jar Binks is that yes is that okay good Yes. Make sure I got my metaphors correct. That's, that's a great metaphor. Yep. Right. Cicero. <laughs> well, I guess, no. Uh, it's funnier if Cicero is a Jar Jar Binks because he talks. Yeah, I guess, a lot. yeah. He's yeah, he would be. He's the, he's the speaker. He's Jar Jar Binks. I'm trying to think of like a senator who dies, but yeah. none of them do. Anyway, sorry. Yeah. I'll, I'll go, I'll go Cicero's with that. Cicero's Jar Jar Binks. I'll go away from that metaphor. <laughs> sort of ruining he's Cicero's, Cicero. For ruining Cicero's <laughs> legacy anymore. Yeah, it's so bad. <laughs> All right, so Octavian's building statues. So Octavian has, like, statues built. Sure. He has the names of things changed. He has all of these concepts, like, but he, he keeps the Senate. Okay. He keeps the Senate intact, and they become, like, an advisory board. It's kind of like yeah. the, like a, a parliament with a monarchy. Okay. It's a lot like that. Well, yeah, someone's got to do the paperwork. Yeah, and he wants the people to have a say. Sure. He just gets final say. Yeah. And he is extremely successful in a lot of his pushes and his ideas. Yeah. Um, and he rules from 27 BC to 14 AD. Okay. So it's not like he just has it for a day. He's not only able to fight all these guys and break the power structure. He's able to completely seize power without having to kill a bunch of people. Apart from Antony, who was sure, sure. trying to kill him. And the wars that happened Wait, to get here. But all the wars that happened, mm -hmm. they again, happened anyway. they are all... Yeah. These people are trying to kill him. Now, he could have just rolled over and taken it, but sure. then he would have ended up dead. Or yeah. somewhere else. And then they would have been dictators. Self-defense. And who's to say Antony wouldn't have been worse as a leader? Sure. Because he just liked to fight. He was not necessarily a good administrator. Yeah. Or, you know... Cicero wasn't going to go for the leadership, and it could have maybe been that the Republic had lasted forever after that, but it didn't. So it sets up from then on a series of emperors. It starts with Octavian becoming Augustus. Yeah. And it ends in 476 AD. I should have probably studied who the last emperor of Rome is, because it's a little important. It's not Nero, is it? No, but Nero's a great example of how far the mighty fall. Sure, sure. Because while while Augustus is considered this great ruler, although he does some questionable stuff, and he is the best self-promoter in history. Oh. He starts getting historians to write about him. It's pretty favorable. So for all we know, I mean, like, half this stuff is untrue. Oh, sure. But realistically, though, we have so many sources. It's nice because Rome was really good at keeping records. And a lot of Romans were very literate and wrote about all the stuff that was going on. So we're able to go, okay, this happened from this guy's perspective. He said sure. this, he said this, he said this. So even if it was inflated, this, it's still yeah. somewhat valid. So anyway. like if you read Suetonius uh, is one of the historians, he's a big fan of Augustus. Like he's all about the guy. So he's very flattering in his speech. But if you read like Tacitus, who was around at the same time, he writes a pretty unflowery, actually really accessible, easy to read history of Rome from 
the founding to, I think, just after Augustus. Oh, okay. So he's like, and he's a contemporary. He's writing all this stuff down, carving into wax tablets, and then transferring it into scrolls and all this stuff. And he's great. But Suetonius is like, he was the greatest guy ever because I don't want the current emperor to cut my head off. Well, regardless, with enough sources... But with enough sources, you can figure out kind of where it fits. Right. So we're able to see that Augustus did all this stuff, but he was also a bit of a bastard. But when you have absolute power, that's what happens. And we go from the founding of Rome with an age of kings, then to this republic. Then we have this crazy, frenetic period right before Caesar's passing where it's... It's like 20 years of just all kinds of crazy stuff going on. Yeah. And then suddenly Octavian, it's like he came about at the perfect time to take advantage of all of this. Right guy, right place. And he, he comes in and he, he just kind of takes the crown. Huh. And then he passes it on to his heir, Tiberius. And then things start to get muddy after that. Yeah. Because people start to die before they're able to have children. Or they're able to have heirs. There's a period of like the four emperors where there's four emperors within a yeah. year. Um, the Praetorian Guard, who are the elite soldiers that protect the emperor, start having control over the emperor. Ooh. And then you get like crazy guys like Caligula, yeah. who elected his horse to be a consul. And apparently Caligula was fine until he had like a fever and was sick. And then he was like unconscious for like a week. Oh. And then he came out of that. Not as fine. And he was not fine after that. And people were like, I don't know what happened. I was like, I don't know, but it, something broke in his brain. And it changed him. So there's probably a mental illness that developed sure. out of all of that. And then you get Nero, who is one of my favorites because he's just so bad. Yeah. He, instead of like ruling Rome, would go on speaking tours. When the fires ravaged Rome and they say like Nero played a fiddle. Well, he yeah. didn't play a fiddle because that wasn't a... That wasn't an instrument. But it is, it, it's a great example of he basically didn't do anything, so he may as well have been playing an instrument. Oh, sure. Um, and it's said that way because he did go on music tours. He just wanted, he would go and have rallies so people would come to him and adulate him and love him in person. Huh. But he hated ruling. He wasn't good at it. And then when this, all this land burned down and all these buildings burned down, it was all housing. It was 40 acres of the city burned. He had it turned into a palace for him, and he would treat it there every weekend as a, a getaway. It's nice. It smells a little burny, but yeah. it's fine. Doesn't that kind of remind you of any a little. previous leaders in the world? But no. So you have this decay of Rome, and it, and then it eventually is just gone. And this is the start of it. It's like this is the height of Rome, and at the peak, it's, from there. Got, it's just all there downhill. Go. There are some bumps where you get some great guys, like Marcus Aurelius, the Stoic. Sure. Who, He's a warrior, but he's a philosopher. He wants best for his people. They made that movie Gladiator about... <laughs> but then, like, his son was a psychopath. Oh. So, it's this wild time where you go from this republic to this empire to... Then there's the Eastern Roman Empire, and it's all because everything collided. All these guys we've talked about are kind of dance around talking yeah. about hit. And this is one of those focal points in history where it's like, whoa, like... Could you imagine being there and seeing this happen? It's a good thing that happened all around 0 B.C. Around 0 B.C. Hmm. Uh, all right, excellent. Well, I learned uh, plenty. Yeah. And there's I, so much more to talk about. Oh, but to be sure, we are out of time. Out of time. We talked about the thing we wanted to talk about. We talked about the thing we wanted to talk about. We said why it's important, where it came from, where it went to. Very good. Good job, Will. That's what we try to do. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we're going to uh, move on. Yeah. So next it, next week we're discussing something totally different. Totally different. Next week we're discussing. Uh, there's still an assassination though. Yep. Uh, we're discussing the first assassination by firearm. Mm-hmm. Someone with a some sort of boom boom stick yep. somebody killed with somebody. A boom boom stick killed somebody who did not have a boom boom stick in uh, 1570. 23rd of January 1570. Uh, we don't know anything more about that. Yep. <laughs> we'll I mean, out. I wasn't going to even say that the assassination was the first with a firearm. I was just going to say who the guy was. Oh. And then it was going to be a surprise. Oh, I'm sorry. About why it's important. Why we do that and we can edit it. We could. It's up to you. It's up to you. Nah. Nah. <laughs> this is better this way. We'll just title it as The Assassination of James Stewart. There we go. Not Jimmy Stewart. James Stewart. That's why he wanted to do it. Scottish guy. All right. 1570. <laughs> That'll be next week. Next week. This Week in History with Mike and Will. Mm-hmm. That's Mike. Uh, 
I'm Will. No. And uh, <laughs> thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, like and subscribe. Share this with other people. You know the whole YouTube thing. Mm -hmm. uh, we hope you're doing well. Keep doing well. Take care of yourselves. Anything else, Will? That's all I got. Man. See you next time. Bye, guys.